So good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday, um, 7th of April. So weird to say that. I feel like this month is already going fast. We're already a week into it, you guys. So um, I just wanted to say welcome. My name is Jacqueline Babbler. Um, I've got two great co-hosts with me this morning, which is going to be Melissa and Megan. So um, we just wanted to talk about starting our day off with gratitude, you guys, um, how it's so important. We do that on every call that we do here on the morning fives as well. So when you start your day off with a grateful heart, it just sets your day is kind of the way that our intention is. So um, yeah, everything just kind of falls into place. So we want to just take a couple minutes and, you know, if you guys have a journal, um, there's like a five minute journal you can get. I've got a self care journal that um, Miss Chastity gave to me um, on my, you guys would die if you saw my nightstand here, but um, we want to write down like five to seven things that you're kind of thankful for in the last 24 to um, 48 hours, just because our last obviously um, morning vibe was on Monday. So, um, I particularly, when I get up, I do a lot of my self-care in the morning. I've got two things that I read. You know, I do my daily Jesus is Calling. Um, that gets me going. I just recently got a new one, which I was super excited. Um, it's called Leadership Promises for Every Day. It's a daily devotional that I do. And after I do my devotional, that just kind of sets my mood to do my gratitude. So um, I like to do like five to seven things that I'm grateful for, but I use what's called like the five senses. So I like to do what I'm grateful for. Um, not just the material things, but just things like I can see, like stepping outside and seeing the sunrise. It's all that stuff that is going to set my mindset for the day. So that's just kind of where I go. So also, um, you know, if anyone does want to share, anyone wants to put in the comments, a couple of things that they're grateful for, you guys feel free. This is, you know, a totally safe zone. We're here to support each other. And it's always nice sometimes just to share what we're grateful for. So um, also today we're going to hit on two topics, um, smart sampling, why it's so important, you guys. Um, and then we're going to touch base on some social media, some basic social media. Um, hopefully we have time. We're just going to kind of go with the flow with us through talking. Um, but I believe you guys are going to get some really good content. So did anyone want to share what they wrote down or anything? You guys can always write it in the bottom too. If you don't, that's fine. Okay. So I think with two topics um, and two really good, important topics, I'm just going to get right into it. Oh, Megan, I'm grateful for you too. Um, so we're going to talk about smart sampling, you guys. And if anyone knows me, um, or if I know anyone hasn't, I had to write this stuff down because otherwise I'm going to squirrel on you guys and it's super early and I am still drinking my mix. Okay. So, um, yeah, my day is just going, my day usually starts about six 30 on days that we don't have these calls. So, um, these calls, I'm usually in my pajamas still underneath my blanket. So um, we will get going here. So bear with me. Like I said, I've got notes. I don't squirrel on you guys. We kind of stay on topic. So, um, okay, smart sampling. Let's talk about or even think about how maybe you started as a customer. Maybe you started as a promoter right away. Maybe you, um, you know, just hit that promoter button right away. Like I did, I did not become a customer. Um, but the reason I didn't become a customer and I became a promoter right away is because of a sample. I tried a three-day sample, um, previously with another company and thought I was feeling amazing. And on day one, I was like, because I told, I physically told, or told the lady, I said, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm already spending a lot of money on my products. I don't need anything else. And on day one, I was like, crap, um, I was feeling better. And so I thought, well, I'm supposed to feel better. So let's just see how day two goes. Day two happened and I still felt amazing. Um, I wasn't, you guys, I didn't have coffee on the first day, which if anyone knew me before Thrive, that was a huge deal. I got up every morning, had my coffee, and it was probably half a pot of coffee before anyone could talk to me. So I knew 
I was sold. So instead of becoming a customer, I just went right to a promoter. I believed in these products from day one. So think about how you believed in these products. You might have been watching someone um, on their journey on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. But what got you? Most people, I would say, I do have a few people that have ordered without sampling, but most people is um, going to be hooked on with a, with a sample. So, so smart sampling is so much more than just getting, you know, two, three, five days of a sample. So what we wanted to talk about is walking you guys through, are we utilizing that funnel? And I know a lot of people say, what is the funnel? Or yeah, 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 I know the funnel, but that doesn't work for me. But the funnel is so key to our business, you guys. Um, and it's a key component of smart sampling. So um, before you even have someone pay you, Yes, I said pay you um, for a sample. We want to put them through the funnel. So what does that mean? What does that look like? It is having them create a free, whatever you want to call it, free customer account on, on your website. Some people use the verbiage of um, creating a free um, full access. You know, um, some people feel like when you say account, they get worried about locking in. Um, that's the verbiage I use. It works for me. I always tell them in parentheses behind it. I don't know why I do, or if I'm voice texting, I always tell them, can you just create a free customer account on my website? There's no credit card information needed right now. That kind of eases them because people sometimes think, I mean, how many times have you clicked on something and you've done so many steps and you get to the end and it's asking for your credit card and you back out of the website because you don't want that information out there. So keep in mind that sometimes that's what gets people a little nervous because they're like, I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. I don't want to put my card in there. So I always just ease their, you know, ease their thoughts with that. So I always, and, and what that does is really that ensures and that locks them into you guys. So our, our system tracks them by their email. So can people go have five or six emails? Absolutely. But we still want to put them through the funnel. So we have them. Um, what does that do? It locks them into you. Um, it shows you in your back office that you have sent out a mini. They haven't ordered yet. So there's a list of your customers that you can follow up with in the future as your potentials. Um, another thing is the company is going to start dripping on them. Okay. They're going to start getting those emails. They can always opt out. Yes. But they're still going to start getting those emails telling them about promos and specials and stuff like that, which is really important for us. So tell them to message you. Okay. So once they've created the account and then they've paid for the sample, we want them to, you want to message them and let them know. So a mistake I was doing, maybe it still works for some people, but a mistake I was doing at the beginning was I was mailing out instructions with them. Um, because I thought I was doing them a great service. I would send them this cute little, you know, sheet had one, you know, steps one through three on there. Um, here's what I found that works best is tell them, hey, once you get your package, let me know. I'm going to give you instructions on how to properly take it. That way, then you've got that communication going. Because if you give them the instructions when they receive it, they could just start taking it and you don't know. So um, I feel then I do give them the instructions when um, they do message me. Um, if I haven't heard from them and probably I would say four or five days, now that's if I mail it out. Um, if you use the mail samplers in the back office, which I love, they're going to get an email saying that it's on its way. You're going to get an email saying it's been sent. And you're also going to get an email saying, hey, your thriver should have received this by now. Um, time to check in with them. So both, both ways, um, I know that if they haven't contacted me, it's sitting on their counter. It's time for me to follow up. This is where we need to keep track of our people because it's up to us. So message them, let them know. And kind of tell them, you guys, say, you know, you could been a, a day one thriver, but here's the thing, you guys, not everyone is going to be a day one thriver. So make sure you tell them like 90% maybe of the people do feel a difference or feel something on the three days, if that's what you're giving them, five days, whatever. But also tell them some people just take longer. Um, you know, not everyone, it just depends on, you know, their their cells, how healthy they are. Are they going to go through a detox? Are they, you know, and you don't have to tell them all that, but just tell them like 90%, but there's about 10% of people that do take a little bit longer. The three days is really just to show you how easy it is to take um, and um, how simple it is in the morning, whatever. So um, with that said, when it arrives, um, I like to 
if I, when once I was newer, I guess, and I do still do this with some people, um, but I like to tell them, like I get them into a three-way message if I feel like I need to. Um, and then what I like to do, I get message. Sorry. Um, what I like to do too is, so I like to have a three-way message only because let's say this person, um, let's say I worked full-time. Okay. And I knew that I possibly could be in the meeting. I can't have my phone on at work. Um, I, I do use this if I'm traveling sometimes and I know I'm going to be at an airline that doesn't have Wi-Fi or something, but pulling a third person in sometimes like one of your uplines, you're like a 12 K or above, or you're personally enrolled, it allows you to have a backup. So I just basically would have the message them and say, Hey, this is my friend. She's been thriving a little bit longer than me. And we want to make sure that you have the greatest, you know, thrive experience. Um, so we just wanted to, you know, make sure that once you love it, we're going to try helping you get it for free. You can talk about, so after you've told them that, um, you know, and they say, you know, how can I thrive for free and just say, Hey, would you be willing to take a post with yourself, with just the DFT on, or maybe holding all three steps or, you know, drinking your lifestyle mix, whatever they're comfortable with. And some people might not be comfortable doing it at all. Um, some people might just be comfortable holding the three steps, um, and taking a picture that way, but just say, Hey, um, would you mind making a post and tagging me? So, um, and just, you know, say, keep it vague, have them keep it vague and just say, um, you know, I'm trying something new today. I can't wait to share um, how it makes me feel in the next couple of days and tag you. Now you're opening up um, that person to thrive for free. Plus you're teaching them once they fall in love with it, if they decide to switch over to be a promoter, you've already taught them the funnel and you've already taught them how to have other people tag them, dip it into other people's market. So with that all, um, but the the little thing that I emailed them is something that I created um, in the message and it does have instructions how I give my samples out and how them how I like to have them feel so um, so that's kind of the gist of the funnel. Um, so how are you going to get people to want a happy pack. Um, I don't, we can call it a sample. We can call it a mini experience. We want to be careful on our verbiage too for social media. And that's something that we can talk about in a little bit later. Um, but basically we want to know how, how do we get these out? You know, are we posting on social media? Are we posting our stories? Are we doing polls? Um, are you belly to belly person? But so Megan's been getting, or excuse me, Melissa, got my two M's on here this morning. Um, Melissa has been getting a ton of samples out lately. So I would like to know if um, Melissa would wants to share first um, about what you're doing, Melissa, how it, how's it's working for you? Um, how many minis are you in? Do you, I set a goal every month to get like three to five out. Um, unfortunately I have not sent on any out yet this week, but I'm going to just keep pushing myself. Can you post an example of your construction email you sent? Um, a sample like in here in the, in the comments, in the, um, yeah, I can do that afterwards if that works for you guys. So Melissa, are you unmuted love? Uh, no, um, no, she's not. So Megan, do you want to go? Sure. <laughs> um, I'm actually she... sending out like four emails. To... Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. I'm actually sending out like four samples today. So this is actually a perfect topic because I feel like you guys samples are everything with our business. Everything. Because we know how incredible our products are and that the fact that 90% of people feel them on day one, why wouldn't you want to get it into people's hands? And I know that I hear a lot of people that say, I can't get anyone interested. First of all, what you say about brings about. So please do not say those things. Start shifting the way that your mindset is working. Because if you're thinking that nobody wants samples, your brain is going to Find the people that don't want samples. So for me, the first thing is you, you got to constantly be talking about the products, constantly talking about the products in your stories, talking about the products in your posts. 
so this is kind of how I'm going to intertwine the social media piece um, with samples because they go hand in hand. And um, there's, I always think there's three types of people, you guys. And I sh I've shared this in the Sunday Zoom that we do for planning your week. There's three types of people. You have people that are on the sidewalk. You have people that are um, in the slow lane. And then you have people that are in the fast lane. And these are people that are watching your stuff on a daily basis. So the people that are on the sidewalk, they might have like a problem, but they don't realize like, they're just like, oh, you know, I'm tired all the time or, oh, I want to lose weight because, you know, summer's coming, but whatever. They're kind of not really in the mindset yet of I'm look actively looking for solutions. Then you, the people that are in the slow lane are like, all right, I got a problem. I should start probably researching ways that I can solve this problem. Like maybe they're Googling stuff. Maybe they're watching your stuff on social media. Um, maybe they have another friend that's sell selling something else. So they're, they're, they know they have a problem and they're actively ser searching for a solution. And then you have someone that is in the fast lane. They have a problem. They are ready. They're just waiting for someone to position themselves as an authority. So I think if I need to make sure that I'm touching on all those people every single week. So how do we do that? With somebody that's on the sidewalk, a way that you might be able to show them that what you have as a solution for them is that you talk about the benefits. So you would say things like, you know, address the things that you used to feel because that will hit home with them. So I am you know, sharing your Thrive story with people, um, either on a live and sharing your experience live with somebody, or maybe it's being interviewed by someone else or interviewing someone else, sharing, openly sharing how Thrive impacted you and where you were before, because that person in that slow lane needs to realize that the thing that their problems that they're having, there is an active solution for it and you have it. So then the person in the slow lane, they know they have a problem, they're actively kind of seeking out solutions. What they're needing is just social proof. So what they're needing you to demonstrate is before and afters from other people besides just you. They need to see, so you can show that in your stories. You can show that in posts using the fan page. You can show that um, by interviewing other thrivers. And they just need an additional source to show that it's not just you that these products are working for, but they're working for so many other people too. And then people in the fast lane, the people in the fast lane, they need to know that they can trust you. So how, how do you treat your customers? How, how do you go above and beyond for your customers? Are people tagging you when they're getting samples so that it, they know that it's not just them that's getting a sample from you, but there's other people that trusted you to get samples because you need to position yourself as an authority. So what are ways that you can do that? Have people take you when they get samples. Um, sharing like little snippets from feedback that you're getting from customers when you're checking in with them. This can look like um, talking about the things, the special things that you do for your customers. Do you send out thank yous? If you don't, you probably should because it's completely changed things for me, for my customers to keep reordering. But then they see that I can trust this person and come to them because they have other people that trust them and they go above and beyond. So if you're demonstrating those things on a daily basis, you'll get people that are interested. So now how do you get them to pull the trigger, right? Something that I do is I, every single week, I talk about how I'm sending out samples. So that's either posting a picture with the products laid out on my counter and just saying, packing up happy packs, drop a heart to get yours. Or if I sent you a three-day sample, would you give me your honest feedback? Take it correctly and give me your honest feedback. Um, or in my stories, I'll talk while I'm in my stories packing up samples. Even if you're not packing up samples, you guys pretend like you are. And talk about like, this is what you get in one of my happy packs. You get the capsules, you get a mixes, you get this patch, blah, blah, blah. And I customize that for you and send it out. I always use the word customized. 
always. Even if you're only sending out the standard three, you are still going to take the time to understand what is important to them. So you're customizing that product for them. People love customization. They like to feel like they're special, like you're taking care of them. Like you're not just sending out the same thing to every Tom, Dick and Harry. Like you're literally taking time to understand what are their needs and sending out something that is specified to them. You guys, our three steps with the standard DFT cover all bases. So even if you're sending out just the back office samples or just the standard three steps, you're still customizing it because you're taking the time to understand what is their pain point. So that that's those are things that have helped me, but also talking to my current customers and asking them, you know, telling this is something that actually I was discussing with a friend with one of my team members the other day. And I came up with this like idea and I was like, oh my God, this is genius. Not to say that I'm a genius, but I was just like, oh my gosh, I love the way that this is worded. I don't know. Sometimes I'm ADHD and things just pop into my head. But she was like, okay, I want to reach out to some of my customers. What can I say to them that doesn't seem like I'm trying to do this for my benefit, but I really want to help them. And the way that I positioned it to her, yeah, you could do DFT colors as customization. That's a good idea. Um, the way that I positioned it to her was like, when you're reaching out to your customers saying, I don't know if I have mentioned this to you yet, but because you're one of my value customers, it comes with a perk that you can actually unlock getting your products for free every single month. And I want to help you accomplish that. Do you know any friends that you think would absolutely love the products like you do? Um, because I want to get samples into their hands. I give samples for free to my customers' referrals because I know that's going to pay me back. The other ones, I I require people to pay for. But if I'm sending them out for my customer, I'm not going to be like, I'm going to charge you for samples. No, I want to help them thrive for free. So that's me sending out samples to their customers for or to their friends for free. So you saying is a perk that they get from being a customer. Because if you're like saying to them, um, I want to help you get your products for free, you know, just find two friends that, that want to order. And then you get, like, stop overcomplicating it, make it super simple. Say, this is a perk that you get. I know that you probably have friends that would love the products like you do. Send me a couple names and I'll send them out some samples. And then after you send out those samples, making sure that you're getting in touch with those people. And that that's how I have a consistent flow of samples going out like every single week. Um, and I'm just going to type out. I don't know if Melissa's back yet. Liz, are you back? Yep. I'm back. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. So um, I'm going to type out what I send out to people when they say they're interested in a sample, like on my social media, either they voted on a poll or they told me in one of my posts. And while I'm doing that, I would love to hear how Melissa's killing the sample game. <laughs> Okay. Sorry guys. I totally like when Jacqueline called my name, um, I was on my laptop and it just like froze. So, um, had to hop on my phone and get back with you guys. So, um, I actually like, wasn't getting very many samples out. Um, I don't know, like in February and the beginning of March. And I kind of had to like reassess like what I was doing because like, in the beginning, like when I went like 4k in my first 30 days, I was like killing it with samples and stuff. And that's literally like, that's how Thrive found me. Steph G was posting about the black labels and I needed energy and I needed, you know, this mood support that she was talking about. And so like, I just like had to look back at what I was doing. And I know like samples, that was my thing. Like, everybody talks about like, get people on thrive, get people on thrive. And I know like day one was thriving for me. So 
I went back and I kind of looked at like what I was posting um, and like what I was sending out in the messages and stuff. And it was kind of like ignorance on fire, to be honest. Um, but that's kind of what I went back to. Like, it was just simplicity. Like I wasn't overcomplicating it. I was just asking people if they wanted to try Thrive. Um, you know, they, they see it in my stories. I'm very consistent with, you know, posting Thrive on my, on my wall and in my stories every single day. And you know, showing my three steps. And I wasn't really like tracking those viewers. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, some people might click on your thing and I would purposely put my poll where they would click on it. So I started doing that again. Um, so then all these people who were clicking, you know, clicking through stories, they were clicking on my poll. And so I would then get into their inbox and I would simply just say like, Hey babe, thanks for viewing my story. Thanks for responding to my poll. I'm on the way to the post office right now to get extra many is out. Can I get one out for you? Um, something super simple like that, but I'm making the ask, you know what I'm saying? Like, because a lot of people, they view your stories, they see your content every day, but they don't reach out. So I went back to making the ask and that's what I've been telling my team too. Like, you don't always know if, I mean, like somebody can view your stuff for months. Like I watched Stephanie for, I don't know, two, almost three weeks before I even reached out and I needed that product. Um, and so I just started, um, messaging my story viewers, like people who like, I would post like five stories, um, in a story series. And those people who are like, on the last one where my story poll is, I would pull those viewers up and ask them too. I mean, it was like a hundred to 200. And so the past two, three, like three weeks now, I have gotten out an average of 10 to 15 minis a day. Um, or no, I'm sorry, a day, a week. Um, but my goal was just getting two to three out a day. And so, normal for me, like was about five a week. Um, so I've tripled the amount that I've gotten out in the last three weeks, um, just by doing that. And I literally, you know, once I make that ask and the, they're saying yes, um, then I just give them the option. Hey, I have a three day for 20. I have a six day for 30, which one would you, which one can I get in the mail for you? So then they come back, they tell me which one I get their email. I send them an invoice through PayPal because I really like that you can print your shipping labels through PayPal. Everything's done through there. Um, but then once they've paid that, I tell them, Hey, once you get this paid, let me know. Um, so we can customize your pack. Um, and I will, um, let them customize by the color of the patch, the DFT. Um, so that, that way they feel like, or if I have shake flavors to choose from, they can definitely customize it that way. Um, but then I like that they are able to do that just because they feel like they're able to customize it. Um, yes, a shipping label through PayPal. Um, so when you send them an invoice, um, and they pay it, like you'll get a thing that says they've paid. If you go into like, um, I log into my computer, my laptop, if you go to, and I can post this in the comments um, on the page or something um, to where you guys have it, but it's, there's actually like a video, I think in Thrive to Survive, maybe Dream Team, somebody had posted it um, a couple years ago, actually. Um, and I found it and you can go to the activity and print go to a shipping and then each of the invoices there, you can print a shipping label. Um, it's actually cheaper than going to the, my post office on what they charge me. Um, I just make sure obviously that your weight for the package is proper. Um, I have a little skill that I weigh my packages. Um, so yes. And then you put your weight in, everything's paid through there. I just use the PayPal balance to do that. And then I print the shipping label and I can drop it in the mail literally within the next couple hours. And they've been getting their samples within, I would say, as long as I get it out same day, like in two to three days. So what I do is once they have paid the, the invoice, um, they come back, they tell me it's paid. I always confirm their shipping address because sometimes if their PayPal account is old, that address may be different from the shipping label. So I confirm the address and then I ask them at that point, um, my funnel process is a little bit different with this, but then at that point, I just say, Hey, I like to track my samples. So I'm going to make you a customer profile with me. Um, what's your phone number? So that that way I have their first and last name. I have the email grabbing their phone number, boom, they're in there as a customer with me. I send them their login information, excuse me. Um, and then once I do that, I let them know, um, that, uh, PayPal also, when you print it, 
print the shipping label, it sends them an email with the tracking information in it. So they've already got the tracking information. Um, and then I let them know, hey, your sample pack is on its way to the mail, be dropping it off in the next hour. Um, let me know whenever it comes so we can go over how to use it so you can see the best results and have the best experience. Then once they get it, like if I haven't heard from them in three days, I'm obviously following up with them. I use my planner. I write everybody's name down. Um, and then I follow up with them every couple of days. I'm just so excited. Have you gotten it? And then they're excited too. And so once I've created that excitement, they get their sample. They usually message me within a couple of days. I then start my three-way. Um, if, you know, somebody's available, whether it's somebody on my team um, or like Jacqueline said, 12K or above or something like that. If I know that like their story is similar to somebody else's on my team, I definitely like to start a three-way with them just because they have that, um, I don't know, that thing that they have in common, whatever you want to call it. But um, so I start that three-way and then boom, I'm checking in with them the next day. And I kind of started like Jacqueline said too. I just, hey, this is my girl, Rachel, you know, we're both here to make sure that you have the most amazing experience. Um, it is good, you know, if I'm at the store, you know, whatever, that three-way is so super important to have that third-party validation. Somebody there, if you don't respond as quickly as the customer needs you to. Um, but then I literally, I check in with them every single day. Usually on the first day, I check in with them in the morning, see how they're feeling, and then at night um, to see how their day went. And then again on day two, usually once they feel amazing that day, I ask them at that point, I'm like, let's get you feeling this amazing every day. Um, and then we turn them into a customer pretty quickly. Um, but that's really like how I get it out, guys. Like I just, I have found that like when I was in the beginning, I was making the ask. Um, Yes, people will comment on your um, your posts when you post about samples and stuff getting out, but I haven't been getting as many like lately. And so I had to look back at like what I was doing previously. And that was just, I was making the ask. Um, and that's kind of what it all boiled down to me. And I've just been killing it and getting so many people on Thrive. That's how I pushed at the end of the month last month to, um, actually flip those and turn them into customers and grab some orders. So that is how I've gotten anywhere from 10 to 15 minis out a week. Um, but just making the ask and, you know, putting them through that funnel and definitely the three-way, um, and keeping track, you know, um, of who I am because I don't use the back office as much. Um, I do sometimes, obviously, like if I'm traveling um, and I'm unable to make samples, but I really customize their pack. Like I get a bubble mailer and I put little like confetti stuff in there and I make it really pretty. And I put a thank you card, just a quick thank you note. I put a couple of my business cards in there. And um, I just, I like to customize it because like, I know whenever I get gifts from people in the mail and it's like truly a happy pack, you know, like I like to make it like that. So I always get real pretty stuff and put it in there. Um, and thank them for thriving with me and trying this. Um, because I know like trying new things is super scary. Like I know it was for me, like that's why I watched so long. Um, I think. And, but then like, once I tried it, it was a wrap. Like I was, I was hooked and, I knew that like, if that's how I started, then I need to get back to getting people on Thrive and just like sampling it. Because once they, once they try Thrive guys, like it's, it's a wrap. So I don't know. That's all my tips for today. Can I, can <laughs> no, I take off awesome. something that you said? Can I take off something real quick? Oh, yeah. Because I saw a question that somebody asked that said like, why do you send them out personally versus the back office? Like mm -hmm. Melissa had said that, Sometimes I do send them out, like maybe I'm close to running out of shakes or like mm -hmm. something like that, or I'm waiting on a shipment, then I'll send them out via back office. But the reason, the reason I like to send them out personally is you guys, we are business owners. And I think the more that you can customize your own personal business, like yes, Thrive, Lavelle does so many amazing things for us. And the fact that they have the ability to send out samples from the back office is so amazing. And they're beautiful and they're packaged nicely and like all the things. But if I can customize it, mm -hmm. that's what sets me apart. So I do like, or like these little like organza bags with paper straws in mine. Um, I include three days of all three steps. 
Sometimes I'll customize out um, patches if I want to. Like if that person really looks like they need white label, um, I might include some white labels in there. But I and then I put like a cute thank you sticker on. I have like this little color theme that I like to stick with. I send out thank you cards. Like the more that I can customize my business, the more I am set apart from somebody else that might be selling Thrive on their timeline too. And then when you're posting pictures of, of it, talking about how you're packing up the samples, they look so cute. And you guys, all of it is a damn write-off, <laughs> like all of it. So the organza bags, I think for a hundred of them, I got like, I paid $8.99 for my bubble mailers. I think for like 50 of them, I paid $14. Mm -hmm. And for the like 100 or 200 paper straws, I think it was seven bucks. So overall to customize my stuff, it's not that expensive. And it just makes the experience so much nicer for people. Absolutely. Um, and for me, you guys, here's the deal what I do. And I don't know, um, it's totally up to you, but whenever the company has a buy to get one, I'm buying mail samplers, okay? Because it works and it's BV for you too. So I'll buy two of them and then you get how many for free? I think it's like you buy six at a time, I feel like. I can't remember. I think it's six for $72. Um, but I do that all the time. So <clears throat> I do that all the time. So I have them in my back office. One is I usually don't run out of product, okay? But here's the thing. Sometimes I run promos for my team where I'm like, I'm doing a fast promo, $10 minis. I will get as many out for you guys because not everyone has product on their hands, okay? So that's another thing. If you're that person that's just thriving for free every single month for your own products and you don't have, you're, you're new and you don't have the product on hand yet, go get the minis saying, you know, transfer some of your credits um, um, or your commission over to credits or whatever, but, you know, have at least five to 10 samples in your back office if you don't have enough to buy an extra month worth at a time. So that's something that I do. Like I said, if it's a buy two, get one. I absolutely do that. Um, and you guys got to remember too, there is no shipping costs when we mail these out to people on the back end. So that is another nice thing. Um, I do usually, like Megan said, I buy the, you know, I have a particular um, color. It's the Tiffany blue. I've always used that um, envelope. I just go into Amazon and I reorder it whenever I need it. Um, but I do the same. So if someone is really, really wanting energy, I will do day one and two on the regular DFT. Day three, I have them try a black label. Okay. So that's where you're customizing it. Um, I would say 98% of the time, everyone gets vanilla from me. And I tell them we have other flavors, um, but I like to send out the vanilla because it's so versatile. If you want it chocolate, put it in chocolate milk. Okay. Um, if you want to add powdered peanut butter, you can do that. I said, you, if you want to make a smoothie, I am not a smoothie person in the morning. Okay. That's way too much work for me. I'll just be real with you. Um, as smoothie as I get, I put it into my blender bottle here and it makes, makes it nice and foamy, thick for me, but that is me. I put it in milk. Um, so I like to tell the people, like, if you want a different flavor, you know, just, you could try it that way. But otherwise we do have these flavors. Sometimes people are really adamant. They're just like, Hey, you know, I really want to try the strawberry. I really want to try, you know, the candy cane. You say that's your favorite. You know, I always do have extra because I try to make sure, you know, if you can't afford to go buy all the boxes, buy a variety pack, you guys, um, you do need to invest a little bit in having some products on hand. Um, when I travel, um, if I am going to be out and about where I know I'm just not, you know, running into Target, whatever, um, I like to have a Ziploc bag. It's not pretty, you guys, but it's a Ziploc bag of a three-day sample, okay? There's no person, unless you don't, you know, some people don't carry a purse, but here's the thing. I am a belly to belly person as well. My last sampler was the lady that checked me out at Walmart. Okay. We went in, it was a cold day here um, in Wisconsin, but I made sure that I had a DFT on the top of my hand. I also was wearing another one, my black label, but I knew we were going shopping. Okay. And I had a long shirt on. So I made sure my DFT was on my hand where I am swiping that card or, and I am loading stuff in, you know, and stuff like that. So on the conveyor belt, whatever, the lady had asked me, she's like, oh, what's that, what's that thing on your hand? Because I made sure 
Um, I don't have any extra in my bedroom, but I made sure it was one that said you are courageous or it was one of the I am ones that way that it just wasn't a colorful one. You know, um, it actually said something. So she was more apt to ask me about it. Um, of course, my boyfriend was at the time was just kind of like, here we go. And, but I kept it short and sweet. I said, it's my, it's, it's my wearable nutrition. Have you ever heard of such a thing? You know, um, it's going directly into my skin. And I just gave her from there. Um, if it would have been a black label that she would have saw, I would have said, Hey, it's my energy sticker girl. You know, could you use something like that? But anyway, on the spot, I held up the line for a whole whopping 30 seconds. You guys, I got her connected on Facebook. I literally handed her my phone and said, um, find yourself. We sent a friend request. She accepted. Um, I got her. I told her, I said, I just need you to sign up on my website. You got um, just so I can track who I'm sending samples out to. And she was logged in. I had her sample out in the mail the very next day. Um, so you guys, you have to, sometimes it's scary to, to do belly to belly. And I know right now, you know, people going out, you still got some, you guys got your face mask on, but wear your DFT where they can see it. Um, if it is not, you know, maybe you're wearing the new tack one and it's too big for the top of your hand and it's still cold where you are. You've got a jacket on, a sweatshirt on. Stick a regular one, you guys, on your hand. Um, if you've got a V-neck, stick it right here. This is called sharing without having to plaster yourself and wearing clothing that, that tells our company and what we are. But it also shows them um, that's all you're doing. Like, obviously, there's two other steps to the three steps, but that's all you have to do is throw that on and it's actually going to absorb through your skin. And does it really work? I get a lot of people, does it really work? I'm like, yeah, you need to try it. So you guys be smart when you're out, um, wear that DFT. I have tan lines all over my body from when I was in Arizona, because I was making sure when we were out go-karting mini golf, I had something to, you know, not sell, but something to share. So, um, belly to belly for me is easy. I'm a talker. I talk to people, whether it's about thrive or not. Like if you happen to get eye contact with me, you better believe you're going to get a conversation, a short conversation with me wherever I'm at. It drives my kids nuts, but I also feel like I need to just, you know, this world where we're, we've gotten some negative and stuff like that. So I like to just smile, talk to people, whatever. So Can I um, got I, something in Jacqueline. Yeah. So I saw somebody say that they don't have a lot of products on hand. I want to give you guys a good tip. So if you don't personally have products on hand, pre-sell samples. If you sell four samples at 20 bucks a piece, that's $80 and you can buy six of them in the back office. Pre-sell. Do not allow the fact that you don't have products on hand to stop you from getting these products into people's bodies. So that's, that's something I've done in the past when I first started and I couldn't afford to get more than just my product or enough to send out. That was before, like you would get a free box of shakes. So I was like, I only have 16. <laughs> so yeah. I would resell them. I would, I would sell a bunch at one time. And that's before we even had the sample option. And I would pre-sell a bunch, buy the product, wait for the product to come and then ship them out. Like, don't feel bad and think you have to get them out that second that they say, yes, no, it's fine. These things can take time sometimes, but pre-sell the product. Do not allow the fact that you do not have product on hand to stop you from talking about sending out samples. And there's uplines that'll help you. So many uplines yeah. that'll help. So someone just asked the samples in the back office. They're three-day samples. The company does send, um, so you get to choose men or women's, um, and you're going to choose, um, so you're going to choose men and women. It's going to be the three packs of capsules. It's going to be three um, lifestyle mix and three DFTs. Um, they are in a beautiful package. You guys, I... I send my samples out differently than the 333. So it's whatever works for you. Um, I do something different, um, but that's just what's worked for my customers. Um, you know, and I know that I have mailed out samples for my team before. Megan, I've done it, you know, when I do those $10 mini races, whatever, I know you send them differently than another person on the team sends them. It's whatever works for you guys. Um, so continue doing that, but the company does do three, 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 if you're wondering what's all back there. Um, so another thing that someone asked is if someone ghosts you after you get them a sample, what do you do? Um, what I like to follow up is 
what I do with any follow-up is going to be the two, two, two rule. So I wait, you know, obviously I want to know that they have it in their hand. Um, you know, where you want to wait, a, you know, I get, I do first class, I think. So I always do get a tracking number with mine. So if they are ghosting me, I will go check that tracking number and be like, crap, did they really receive it? Um, did it get lost? You know, our mail system is so great these days. So I just always want to make sure I do that. So once I know that they have it or they say, oh my gosh, I got it. And then you're like, okay, let's start tomorrow. And then you message them, you know, and like, did you start? No, I forgot. Then you'd be like, girl, you know, like, voice texas you guys they want to hear you too girl i'm so excited for you to try just set those capsules next to your bed um if i'm not a person that when i wake up in the morning i i, I reach for my phone and i get my ass out of bed otherwise i won't get out of bed so i you know maybe either the person that go brushes their teeth right away in the morning and be like put the capsules next to your toothbrush give them a suggestion because otherwise it is sitting on that kitchen counter on top of the fridge or in the front seat of their car still you guys um, so once you just give them suggestions, be like, girl, I'll check in with you again. Well, then if they start ghosting you, what I would do is I would wait. So two days, I would wait two weeks and then two months. Yes. I know that sample is sitting there and you're dying because you're like, oh my gosh, I need that new customer. I need my PPA to move. I need her, but here's the thing. It might just not be their time. So, you know, find your blessing in it and if it's you know if they don't get back to you for two months but then they finally try it and they love it and they become one of your rock star promoters you're going to be you know thanking thanking the lords um so i like to just you know and after a while if they just keep ghosting you you guys i would not go back and say hey you know what i have someone else i could use that sample can you mail it back because i think that's rude um here's the thing you're not out anything because you've had them pay for it, right? Now, if you were mailing out all free samples and every single person started ghosting you because they have no interest or it's just not a priority because they didn't put any value to it by paying for it, that's on you. So that's why we like to have people pay for them. Um, but if, um, you know, I would say if, they don't get back to you in a couple of days. They might be scared. Maybe they did. Maybe they're just scared to try it and just reach out and be like, Hey girl, did you try it? I can't wait for you to try it. Don't worry. You know, I'll, I'll check in with you. You're going to have a great experience. Make sure you're positive, but voice text them to you guys. Um, so I think we have like 13 minutes left. Does anyone have any questions on sampling? Did we cover anything like stories we talked about doing polls? We talked about, you know, showing like visuals because I I'm a visual person. And if I see a lot of text, even if I see sometimes like a picture of just someone holding not no face, just a hand holding the three steps, that means nothing to me, you guys. If I was not in Thrive, that would mean nothing to me. That's just a picture of someone holding some packaging of some stuff. Okay. So what's going to, got to ask yourself, what's going to stop my, me from scrolling Facebook? It's going to be a picture of my friend, super happy. Um, you know, maybe you holding the three steps, maybe it's holding just one step, whatever it is. But when I just see three products being held up in a timeline, I won't stop my scroll. Now, if it's in the story and there's fun stuff going on and there's verbiage and there's music, I might stop and look at it. So you got to remember what kind of platform are you using? What would work for you? What would, you know, stop you in your tracks too? So, um, so that's kind of getting our step into, um, social media. Um, so I always talk about, are you marketing yourself or are you trying to sell thrive? Okay. So there's two different ways of looking at, you know, you guys, um, social media. So once I guess we become promoters, do we, obviously we don't want to be posting negative stuff anymore, but do we know what, how we're branding ourselves? That's what it's really about. You guys, people are going to start trusting you. We're going to start building relationships with people because we are in the business of network marketing. Okay. Don't think you're just going to stick some posts up and people are going to start contacting you and you're going to start getting sales because that's not the way it works. And if it does, you let me know, because I have never had it happen where I just start putting posts in everyone's reaching out to me. There's work to be done. Yes. So um, there's a huge difference. So we're going to talk about how we share ourselves. Um, 
don't post and pray. Oh my gosh, I love that. So there's a huge difference, you know, um, how we share about ourselves, who we are, how the products have enhanced our lives. Like we need to share, okay? We need to be vulnerable when we're on Facebook. Um, not so much that we are sharing all of our dirty laundry, um, but we want to be vulnerable. We want to be relatable. We want people to trust us, you guys. Um, and we want to share how the products are making us feel inside and out. Okay. Not everyone's looking for that outside. You might look at, you know, someone and you're like, oh, she's skinny. Well, you know what? She might be at home crying herself to sleep every night because her stress levels are so high. Kids are driving her nuts. Her boss is, you know, a totally a-hole, blah, blah, blah. And she could use some mental focus, mental clarity, and, you know, some mood support. So we don't know. We can't judge the book by its cover, just because someone's skinny doesn't mean that they don't need Thrive, okay? Um, there's many reasons, so that's why we need to, we need to be looking at the Lavelle fan page, you guys. I'm not saying go out and share that every single day, but we need to be looking at those stories so we can know what's out there, or you need to go out there and you need to search. So you're seeing a lot of, you know, at the time of COVID, we saw all those tired nurses and doctors. I was going out there and I was sharing nurses and doctors stories because that's relatable to most of my audience that I was seeing on Facebook. So that's what we want to do is we want to be relatable. Um, yes, we want to show the financial freedom. So yesterday was payday. This is where we got, you know, we encourage our team to go live. Okay, you guys, I know it's scary, but literally do it, post it. Don't ever look back. Don't critique yourself. Um, but go live, share what that extra $30 did. Wow, my, my check today just put in, you know, fill the tank of my gas, you know, and I don't have to dip into my nine to five job if that's what you're doing. You know, hey, just, you know, take a picture of your trunk full of groceries and be like, this is paid for by Thrive. I wouldn't be able to go through the grocery store and just pick and choose whatever I wanted. I would have to keep track in my head and stick to a list. I was able to grab some extra fun stuff, you know, maybe some extra snacks for the kids, whatever you guys, but be relatable. That's what people want. Um, I just saw the question on there and I just totally squirreled because I read it. My ADHD kicked in. So I have a zoom every single Sunday that we literally help you plan all of your content. So I encourage yes, you guys if you're struggling with, that, with that sort of thing, like please hop on It's Sundays at 8 AM central standard time. And we literally figure out like, how do you talk about things that aren't, that aren't just thrive because you guys, you're not thrive. How are you building community around something else and then incorporating Thrive into that? Like you weren't, you weren't born into this world and then like your parents are like, you're going to be a Thriver one day. No, like we have other things. So I will literally help you with how do you create different types of content? When are good days to talk about it? How to build community around it? Everything you need. If you haven't attended one of them yet, you can go to my YouTube channel. It's Megan Holcomb and you can watch some of our ones that we've done previously, but it has helped my business so much and my engagement is up on all of my platforms because we've gone through this and my business is better than it's ever been because of it. So please, please, if you feel like you're struggling with that, like join our Sunday Zooms because it's, it's impacted me for sure. And I know it's impacting other people. So yeah, so we're running, we got about seven minutes and we still got to do our gratitude. Um, um, gratitude, not gratitude. We got to close out with our, um, help me out, Brittany. Um, hundred days to brave. Thank you. I got you, boo-boo. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I would say Melissa, Megan, like for me, I'm going to just ask you guys to do like one to two tips that you do every single day that, or, or just an overview of, of your general social media. Um, where can we find the link for Sunday Zooms? Um, it's posted we, in the dream team every single week. And I know yeah. that Hyder also includes it on the list of Zooms that she posts too. Yep. If you yep. go into the dream team 2021, <clears throat> click announcements. I, every single Sunday, I post that week's Zooms. So it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, all of Mondays, every single Zoom is posted in that link and I share the replays. Yeah. So um, just 
Melissa and Megan, if you want to just give like one or two tips real quick, and then we'll do our little ending here and get everyone on going for their day. Um, but like one thing I, for me, the first thing I noticed when I, if anyone asked me, and I just did the same to Megan, like literally Megan knows she's, she is my social media girl. Um, I went to her just like this last week or the week before, I can't remember, but I'm like, girl, my engagement's down. What is going on? But I had been traveling a lot. I was posting at different times. What I should have done is I should have set my alarm for two hours ahead um, because I was in a two hour behind time zone and I should have got my ass up and posted, which I didn't because I was on vacation. However, since that, my algorithm is off and now I'm trying to rebuild that, you guys. So it's so important to stay consistent. What's working? Stay consistent. I'm telling you, um, it it will. It, now I'm busting my ass. Just my stories are still up. I'm getting great contact. Um, I've got you know two to three hundred views of my stories, which I think is good. Um, but my timeline is hurting. So I would say one, stay consistent. You guys. Um, Find those time zones, and Megan goes over that. Find those time zones um, that's best for posting. Um, obviously, we don't want to be posting at eight o'clock in the morning, um, you know, or nine o'clock or something when most of our friends are working. Okay, most people aren't on Facebook, so we need we want to find the good time zone. Um, but social media, my biggest thing is I want to make sure I've got a clear picture of myself. I try not to change my profile picture a lot just because I want people to recognize me, remember. Um, so when they see that little icon, you know, um, that they know it's me. Another thing is, is I have my five things that are about me that are not about Thrive, okay? That's why I'm branding myself on Facebook. Um, I believe it is country. I'm a country mom of three. I might have my boxers still on there. I'm not sure because I do share about Walter and everyone loves to follow, follow things about Walter, okay? Um, so, and then I have um, a taco addict because I love tacos. I get posts from people. I have people commenting on my page, tagging me on taco stuff. This is how they know me other than Thrive. Um, and then I think I have a passion. I think I've got dream maker or something like that. And I'm about my my stones and my energy work. So people know this about me, you guys. If you were to ask what I am, I, I run into people sometimes when I'm out and about and they're like, oh, you're that Thrive Girl. They know that you're that Thrive Girl because you've done your job and you've been consistent and you post about it, you share about it, you're passionate about it. But you are more than just a Thrive person, okay, you guys? Who are you really? So that's what those five things are in my bio. So that's what you want to be known for. That's what you want to share information about, um, you know, and that's what you want people to start remembering you by. So I would just say, make sure that your bio looks good. Your profile picture is good. Um, in your background um, picture, if it's a group of people, no one's getting cut off, make sure it looks nice, you guys. Don't look sloppy, okay? So that, I'm just going to do a quick overview. That's what I would say for social media is, What's your first impression, especially when you are friend requesting someone or someone is looking on your timeline? I also make sure that when I am friend requesting people, it is not right after I just do a Thrive post because I want them to know I'm not just friend requesting them because of Thrive. And it might be after I do like an interaction post. It might be after I post a fun picture of me and my kiddos having a good time. They're like, oh, wow, she looks like she's having a good time and she's family based, blah, 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 with her kiddos. So I just don't want to appear spammy. So um, Melissa or Megan, do you have I'll anything for social media? I'll chime in super fast. Um, if you're not talking about the products, don't expect anyone to want to have a sample. <laughs> you have to constantly talk about how the products are helping you on a daily basis and incorporate it into the thing that makes you unique. So for, I'm just going to give a fast example, then I can pop it over to Melissa. Um, for me, my thing is godly focused health and wellness. So I'm helping people with exercises, meal prepping, um, mindset things, sharing my personal story. And then I talk about how my supplements have helped me get to that point or how they, it would, they would benefit from it every single day. I talk about it. So I know that when I talk about samples, I've done the, the groundwork and talked about it enough and made it a relatable enough and made it appealing enough that people will want the sample. If you're not, if you're just posting about your capsules in the morning and your stories, don't expect anyone to want a sample because they have no idea what it's about. So make sure that you're explaining your story and sharing the benefits that how it would help other people, not just you, but you want to help other people with these products. Melissa? Yeah, I would, I mean, 
literally piggyback off what you said. You have to share it. You have to be consistent. So, you know, I share my three steps every single day in my stories, but I'm also getting at least one to two samples out a day. Um, or I'm posting something about samples in my stories so that people are clear as day. They know what a sample is, all the things. Um, and I just, I make the ask, you know what I'm saying? Like I, if I see them viewing my stories, I'm very vigilant on like, who's been viewing them. If you're consistent with viewing my stories, you've seen me post about this several times. So I'm just asking them, Hey girl, let me get you some thrive out in the mail. You need to try this. Um, but I'm not, I'm trying not to be scared to ask anymore. Um, like Jacqueline said, you know, belly to belly, like that is way out of my comfort zone, but I have two, three day minis in my purse. And the last three times I've gone to the post office, there's been a different worker every time. And I've given each one of them a sample and signed one as a customer already. So always have those samples on you. Always make the ask and just be brave. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, like, if you are mailing out samples enough, those male people, they're going to get to know you and they're going to wonder what is this girl mailing out all the time? You know, every single one of the male ladies. And what I do is I've gotten the one, I live in a village, you guys of like 800 people. Okay. That one male lady, she knows, well, they closed on our post office because of lunch break for like two hours because we're such a small community. Then I go to the next town over and then I go over to the next one too. So I've hit all the post offices in the area. Again, it's a tax write-off and I am actually talking about my business too. So I have gotten most of my male people to know I am the Thrive Girl um, and I have talked to the business and I have talked the products with them. So yes, so be brave, do it. Here's the thing, you guys might feel like you're gonna throw up on them. You're not going to throw up. Well, maybe you will, but you're not going to throw up. You're not going to die. The worst that can happen is they're like, eh, well, that sounds great. But they're going to continue. The people um, at the post office, I'm saying, are going to continue seeing you come. They're going to know people are wanting this. But if you are in line and you see a mom with screaming children, be like, girl, I hear you. You know, I have something that could help you. Don't be afraid of talk conversation. People are missing that interaction these days, you guys. So um, don't be afraid to say it, you know, and the more you do belly to belly, um, I think it's going to get easier. It's not so much, uh, we were taught before, and this is a total no-no. When we would check out, we'd leave our business card with our tip, you know, paying our bill at a meal and we would leave. Well, there's no interaction. That is getting thrown away. You need to open your mouth. Okay, you guys. So I had a server down in um, Phoenix when I was down there and she had a great personnel. And I told her, I said, oh my gosh, girl, you've got so much energy. You look so busy. I said, I would love for you to try a sample of what I have and what I use every single day because I think you could benefit from this. She is now had a sample she has signed up on my website we are going through the funnel right now um and she is thinking about ordering but she's in the middle of a move so she's all worried about you know where a package is going to go so you guys just do it i'm serious belly to belly will help your business explode even more so all right um Brittany, are you doing the no. Days to break? no nope. who do we got today i think hey, Tiffany's doing it this morning. yeah i got it all right uh, hold on tiffany before you start um, Jacqueline. Yeah, uh, guys, I want you to drop one thing that you're going to implement today, or something that you learned. Jacqueline's going to pick a winner. Tiffany's going to read, and we're going to get off. Oh yeah. Way. So drop something that you learned. Jacqueline, pick a winner. Tiff, let's do it. All right, we're on day fifty-four. It's say yes. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Proverbs twenty-eight one. Saying yes changes everything. Walking through the door, agreeing in the moment. Sometimes it is just what is needed to show you the big, the next big yes. I said yes to interning at UGA. I said yes to moving back to Marietta. I said yes to Nashville. I said yes to Scotland. And I said yes to my college ministry in Nashville after returning from Scotland in a major life circle kind of way. We have to say yes, even when it's scary or costly or unknown. We don't screw up by saying yes to the wrong things. We screw up by letting all the floats in the parade pass us by and never jumping on one of them for a ride to the end. Moving to India to start an orphanage as a single woman, giving up your solo music career to join a group of unguaranteed success, giving up the life you know as a single person to get married. 
You've heard before that saying yes to one thing is saying no to all the others. It's true, I think. If saying yes to a sushi dinner with my Vanderbilt ba baseball players, I'm saying no to Mexican with my friends. If I say yes to a city, a date, or a friend in need, I'm saying no to all of the other options. If the yeses feel scary, take comfort in knowing that if you are seeking God, you are asking him to lead you. He hears you and he is doing just that. If you are living in obedience to him, he brings opportunities into your life. You can trust that. And he will take care of you when you say yes. Say yes to the gym, say yes to the open door, and say yes to the situations that stretch you and scare you and ask you to be a better you than you can think you can be. Say yes to the moments that will only come once. Say yes to serving, say yes to Jesus in every way every chance you get. Today's task, be brave. Say yes to one small thing today. A friend's request, a push from the Lord, an invite to an event, or a healthy choice for yourself. Huh. I love it. How and it's it so funny that Lisa up? said on Monday, it seems like all these kind of relate. So say yes. Say yes to you guys getting those minis out, say yes to trying to belly to belly, you know, and maybe you chicken out, but you still say hi to someone and you start a conversation and the next time it'll go a little bit further, but say yes to saying, I'm going to get this many minis out. I am going to post something today. Um, I'm going to do a poll, whatever. So I'm just going to quick scroll through. And I landed on a Christina Randall's. Hopefully hey. I said your name right. All right. Did I say it right? Message me. I will get you the list of options. Before we close this out, I want every single person to message their upline and tell them how many minis they're getting out today. Not this week, not this month, today. All right? Love it. Thank you guys so, so much. Happy Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. Wellness Wednesday. Um, I hope you guys all got something from this. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Megan. You guys both are beautiful people with great, awesome information that you guys shared. And thank you, Brittany, for, you know, running this show here. All right, guys. Happy Wednesday. Peace out. Bye, y'all.